My name is Shelly Castellano. I'm the founder of Modern Emergency ID Card, and we're going to make this kind of quick because I know you guys want to take a break. So press the green button. Yes. All right. And this is uh, Bill Fisher. He's my developing partner, and he's here to answer any technical questions you may have after the presentation. I just have a question. How many of you have allergies or severe health concerns? Raise your hand. Nobody has allergies here, nobody has. <laughs> I'm just curious, um, of those of you that do, do you carry anything in your wallet that communicates for you if you can't speak for yourself to a first responder? No, you just, you, you have it in your head, you just, okay. Um, and you all have a driver's license, right? So your driver's license has a barcode on it. That barcode is now scannable by a first responder and that has the potential, that barcode has the potential to help save your life. So we have developed um, a solution to a problem and Modern Emergency ID is that solution. This is what the product looks like. Um, it's a free app. It's in iTunes and Google Play right now. Um, you can download it today and you're basically, it's a pre-interview for an accident. Um, you, you volunteer your own patient information and the information lives on your own personal device. We do not store it in a centralized database anywhere. You order the card, the card goes behind your driver's license. If anything happens, the first responder can scan that and all of your medical information gets to the hospital before you even get there. And this is my developer, Bill, and we've been working on this for about two years. We are live. You can put it on um, Android or Apple devices. And this is kind of the consumer patient flow. So you download it, you enter your information, you sign um, the privacy waiver, and you make a purchase, and you put it behind your driver's license. So that's all the consumer really needs to know. And then from the EMS user flow, um, when an accident happens, they can scan the information that's in the barcode. The information goes into an incident report, gets into a cloud, and gets to the hospital before you even get there. And one of the great things about Medic is um, in the fields, you can hide information in the barcode or you can make it printed on the card. So if you have a concussion history or an AIDS history or HIV and you don't want that information available to a Good Samaritan or something like that, but you know you need to communicate that to a, a hospital person, you can still put that information in the barcode. So. Um, I've been working with the National EMS Information Systems, and they are the um, people who regulate all the information that EMS is required to get from each incident report. So the back end of this is very smart. It has ICD-10 codes, RX norm codes, all the codes that you and I don't need to know about, but that are tied into your allergies and your health concerns. And competition-wise, everybody says, well, this already exists, or why doesn't it already exist? There are a couple companies that have tried to do something fairly similar in the past, but they're all outdated, and nobody is really um, has the technology that we have. We have patents pending, we have a trademark, and we have um, a lot of proprietary information on the back end. Customer acquisitions and sales, um, we're basically going to be licensing this. Hopefully, this will eventually become part of your driver's license. There's open information in the barcode, so you won't have to carry two cards. Um, we're also gonna have what's called a smart, uh, smart Med ID, and that becomes your new health insurance ID card. So we're looking to do pilot programs and studies to just try to verify how it's gonna work with the EHRs. And target partnerships, um, when you're in the app, if you know your blood type, you can volunteer that. If you don't know it, you can click and become a, a donor, a blood or eye tissue donor with Donate Life America or the American Red Cross. And beta testing, this is kind of the pilot program I was just explaining. Um, and this is my medic team. And here's Bill. And here's some information if you want to tweet with us or contact us um, online anywhere. You can get a hold of us 24 seven. And today, if you download the app and you make a purchase, you can come to our booth and get a temporary sticker, which will allow you to have that information available um, in, before your actual card arrives. So it's a free app, you can download it today, and let me know if you have any questions.
Yeah. Um, Shelley, let me just add one more thing before the okay. question, which is that uh, one of the exciting things about this is the IP that we've developed because everything that is necessary to know is on this card. There's no back-end servers. There's no additional technology required, which means that when the entire cell network goes down, when the big one hits Los Angeles, people will still be able to access the information that's on this card. We have a proprietary format that we've developed that we're sharing with people that we're trying to license to get used that encodes the information, everything that's on your, on your card here, all your drugs, all your medications, all your uh, medical problems, all your concerns in that single barcode in a way that's easily accessible to anybody and that's what we're trying to do outreach on. So the technology is there and very powerful. Um, let's, let's go to questions. I don't want to hold up, but that's a useful yeah. thing for people to realize for licensing today. Yes, so we have emergency contact information. We also let you indicate. Printed on the you, card as well. Yeah, it's also printed on the card. So if a first responder finds or isn't the person that finds you, they can still find your card. And whatever you volunteer to be printed on the card, they can read with their eyes. So right now it scans exactly like a driver's license, but a driver's license only gives name, address, date of birth, hair color, whatever. And so. If you don't have a driver's license, this barcode is compatible with the driver's license code. If the emergency medical people scan it, even if they don't have our advanced technology implemented, they'll still be able to read it and it works exactly like a, a driver's license and they'll immediately get your name, address, yes. gender, and so forth, and age. Mm -hmm. This is actually the this modern version kids. of ICE. So, yeah, so if you have a senior citizen that doesn't drive anymore, okay, um, this is still very valuable for them because it's a way to ID them. It's not a national card. It, we're not recognized by the federal government yet. Going through getting that done with AAMBA is taking a long time. But ideally, we would like to integrate with that at some point. Go ahead. Um, it has the ability to, you can enter that information and it does give the phone number. So the first responder can call that number immediately. It can also automatically be called in the app. So if the person finds the medic um, app on your phone, it's a live button. They just live call it from right there. Right, so it's a free app. There is no subscription at this point. And if your medications change, you do need to order a new card. Now the first responder does not need to know how many milligrams of anything you're taking. Their primary goal is to know what's wrong with you and what you might be taking that you can be having a reaction to. So um, there's, a, there's a question button in the app that'll answer a lot of those questions for you. So, yeah. The first responder, again, wants to know what's wrong and what what long-term medications you've been on. So if you have cancer, for example, we don't break down exactly what kind of cancer you're gonna indicate. We just say that you have cancer and you've been on this drug for 12 months or whatever. So the first responders will never really ask you how many milligrams of something you're taking. That's not, that's not important to them. Right, yeah, so, that's important to realize this is not intended to be to replace an emerg a, a full medical, medical record. Medical chart, yeah. This and, is, and that's why we took it this approach, because otherwise it would be in, immensely complicated. You have to think of this, this is really easy to get complicated. <laughs> so we had to simplify this so that it's just, you know, 50 questions and it's really relevant to saving your life. Um, we're national, I have sales Chicago, Florida, New York right now, California, so. Yes, we're integrating with Image Trend right now. We're in the process of doing that. Um, there are 45 ePCR companies out there that are nationally compliant. And so all we're doing is um, giving them our back end database so they can read everything and it automatically parses. So anywhere in the country, somebody could, like a first responder, could take this card? Yes. It reads exactly like a driver's license right now. And so they can read it with their eyes, they can scan it. And if it isn't already, if we haven't already partnered with them, the information will go into what's called a notes field in the EPCR, and they'll still have the data. The reason we chose the uh, PDF 417 code is because that's the code that's used by driver's licenses, and therefore what we did is we extended the driver's license format with the permission of AAMVA, which is the place that basically sets the informal uh, standards for the United States. And so because of the fact that we're using both, uh, you, can, you can get it different ways. But the, this, this code is the most flexible and the most powerful in terms of being readable by an ordinary EMS, even if they don't adopt our technology. Even if the, the, the little scanner that they've got for some reason can't read it, you can still get the vitals of name, address, 
and so forth. So that's why we did it. But we also put it in a QR code format in the back. The PDF 417 and the QR basically hold the same information. They both hold a lot of data. Yeah, and we will be doing neurofield communication radio transmission at some point, however, and that's in the patent. Um, but um, the problem with that right now is the first responders don't have the technology to read that. So I'm having to start, you know, dealing with where they can, where they're, where they're at right now, and then know that they can go further. So when we get into different types of um, data transmission, we'll be able to expand the amount of data that. That is uh, Yeah, transmitted. that's a great plan to do someday and carry more information in the card, but nobody's going to be able to read it today. So it's, it's a little bit too ahead of the market. We're ready for it when it comes, though. Yeah, it's all in the plan. It's just we're dealing with the government. So go ahead. Um, right now, it is, there's a little indicator on the top you can pull down and the first responder can, can pull it down from your notif daily notifications. When you make a purchase, um, you'll get a sticker that goes on the back of your, uh, the back of your uh, device or your phone and then they'll know that it's on the device. The problem is when I've done all my ride-alongs with everybody is um, your phone goes flying, it's cracked, it's locked, they, they can't match the phone with the patient. So if you're um, commuting on a, on a train and the train has an accident, your laptops, everything goes flying and they're, they're not gonna try to say, okay, whose phone is this? You have a medic ID. They're gonna go to your wallet and they're gonna go to your purse and they're gonna start looking around and try to figure out who you are and maybe what's wrong with you. Very so we had to really solution. simplify it. Yeah. yeah, very often the low-tech solution is the best solution. Piece yeah. of plastic. It, un unless you literally have been, you know, Think burned of Katrina. or something like that. This, this is, is a readable. waterproof way or of carrying wet. Yeah, you fall in, the, fall in the lake. This is still readable. It's plastic. Yeah. My dog has one of those. <laughs> um, I've been doing a lot of talking with the um, Army with some colonels in the army and just kind of seeing what they're doing as well because they're usually our, um, our, our rats. <laughs> um, you know, it it's just depends on how much information goes, in, goes into these things. Um, it, like I said, it's really hard to, or really easy to overthink this. The first, this is a first responder product at this point and they just need to know the basics to save your life. So when this eventually goes into the EHRs, um, like to be able to go into a doctor's office and instead of having to fill out paperwork every time, you just basically beep and then all of your paperwork is done. So when it gets to that point, we're still a few years away and we're going to have some more solutions for that. We're also interested in standards efforts and we're certainly working with standards bodies about doing this. But that's a long, long, long horizon process, five, ten years probably before that's ready. And also, as Shelley mentioned earlier, it's a matter of who has the equipment. And the first responders, until they commit in mass to buy the equipment that will read those things, they're not of any value. Whereas a plastic card in your wallet is guaranteed to be of value tomorrow. So Eric used to be a first responder, and he's got his hand up in the back of the room. Yeah, thank you, Eric. Yeah, and like I said, we just I basically took the back end of what the first responders need and I made it into a consumer user-friendly format. And so you guys, the consumer doesn't have to think about anything. You just fill out the information in the form. Even if you don't have any allergies, you pick none because then the first responder knows that um, that question has been asked and they can move quicker on to the next area. So thank you very much and thank you, Dan, for letting me speak. Thank you. We will have a short break right now.